Hello guys, the DB Grinder here, back at it again with another video, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a player interview slash deck profile with the almighty Nash. Also, if you want to check out his competitive Discord, I will leave a link to it down below in the description. If you want to play for money, you can go there. Definitely the best Discord for it. And with that being said, let's hop right into the video. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, this is Nash and I'm talking about the deck profile because there were a lot of requests about the VW deck profile I ran the, during one of the, uh, of the video of the DB Grinder. So I'm here to explain my issues. Uh, about the VW names, it's everything almost standard. Um, someone decided to cut Tutu. Uh, Tutu is a name you can cut for uh, uh, Eterda Desire because the deck is very bricky. Uh, I have to be honest, um, it should break like once every five, six games. But uh, if you run six pots or five pots, uh, the odds of breaking are way less than usual. And I don't really care about the conflict of the pots because if I open both pots, I usually start with Desire, depending on my end, obviously, uh, if you don't open Qinglong, because if you open Qinglong, then I'm Ella Scarred to banish the other two with the sides because, I mean, I'm not a, I, I, um, I, I'm not that good. Okay, I'm not <laughs> that lucky. Um, anyways, so uh, I usually start with the side because if you get Ash on the side, then you can proceed to prosperity. Um, people will say why you don't run foolish goods. About this question, I tested a lot the combos with foolish goods. Um, I tested a lot also the version with Chaofeng, ending with the three beasts, uh, Ashin and then Chuchu on the board, which was a solid end board, because I was using the old uh, BFD spreadsheet I made, and I posted it on the VW group on Facebook, if you want to check it out or you want to include it in the video at the bottom. Yeah, I'll so put it in the description. Can, if you want to put it in the description, okay. So, basically... Uh, the, the rank 9 version was not that optim optimal because I was cutting off uh, uh, possible other end boards. So I decided to not run that version because it was taking 5 slots in the extra deck, which was huge. And I decided to be more flexible about my end board. Uh, I decided to put 2-2 to two -two and run only 5 pots and not 6 like someone would suggest, because uh, Lao Lao can combo in a way with Qinglong, if you get what I mean, because you can send Tutu, you can discard the Gamma, because when you break with the Beastal World, it's usually with Gamma, Nayan, or other names, usually you don't break on spells or traps. It's not that uh, doable to break on spell and traps. You usually break on end traps. Okay? So... If I break on entraps and I open Lao Lao Chinglong, I can send Tutu to send Gamma and at least make a scoofed combo. So at that point, I have decided still to run Tutu because it's a possible recovery. It's a possible push on the board if you get interrupted on your normal sum. So uh, I, I want the most flex flexibility as possible. Uh, the same reason applies to entraps. So Gamma has a synergy with the deck with the Tutu because so you know you will always see driver. Like driver is sticked in my end like glue. Mm -hmm. so, so you have to get rid of that driver. It's with Chinglong, it's with Tutu. So I mean the brick is not that much of a brick if you start your comb. Uh, Ash is a level three. Impermanence, uh, okay, let me talk about impermanence. I tried Bell. Bell is not good because you run only nine entraps, so you have, you need a way, at least 15% of the times, or 20% of the times, top your opponent with one entra. Bell does not work alone. And because of that, you cannot run Bell in your decklist, because you're, by running nine entraps, you will see two every three games, almost and the other two games you will see just one or no end so i want every entrap to be able to affect on my opponent and the board on his own okay and bell only affects actually the end board um 
affects the end board like uh, for example let me give you an example against the three brigade you can only use belle with against revolt but they will have apollos on the board so how do you actually use bell at that point there is no spot um and by having no spot i rather prefer having impermanence impermanence because it's good to draw with desire it's good to search with the prosperity and if you check my um charter of the best end traps in the game i sent you on discord you will see uh you will see w which are the most impactful end trap in the game right now against the meta decks or not meta decks or the not usual random decks right now so impermanence was the best choice for me. uh about the side deck uh, someone could say why do you run phantasmai if it completes uh, with impermanence gun okay now let's think about it against the three brigade you summon phantasm your opponent will have an apollos on them so you will enter in battle you attack the apollosa that will force the revolt and phantasma is not anymore on the board so your impermanence will be alive your gamma will be alive and at that point phantasma does not conflict anymore the same the same happens against sky Star. okay now um, before before uh, uh, in the past okay let's talk about the past in the past you were using phantasma against the sky striker on the summon of it because uh, your opponent couldn't get rid of phantasma that easy but now if you run uh, cards like storm okay and if you draw it with phantasma or if you open it actually you can use phantasma on the first link so your opponent will have actually the chance to get rid of your phantasma using zeke or using anchor or using uh, after barner and your storm will be alive otherwise if it does not get rid of the phantasma you will have just a material for your dragoon using mod remove was that clear yeah yeah it definitely makes sense okay so that's the reason and also there is another reason about phantasma because when when you go second i always do that and i really suggest to do that to you guys as well i always side the desires out um, my side pattern for this deck is usually siding out the side two to shambu and uh, one nayan and one shinglong that's usually my side pattern um i have to cut shinglong and some normal summons because uh, because you will need more space for end traps or for uh, um, card or for for blowout cards like feather feather duster storm uh, stuff like that but uh, if you cut names you cannot afford to use the side even go even though you are going safe because if you banish too many names or you banish the most important spell or traps in your deck you will not be able to combo to overturn your opponent and the board and that just does not make sense to me so at that point you have to respect your side pattern following uh, um, your decision your decisions and cutting off the desires and some names so you, they don't conflict with each other and i run phantasma to recover basically the boost i lose uh, by cutting uh, desire because you are losing a card which draws two cards in your deck. At that point, you will need to replace that card with a card which can uh, interact with your opponent uh, board, but can also help you to unbreak your end, and that's the role of Phantom. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Honestly, I really like how Does you explained, like, Phantasmi versus, like, Tri-Brigade. How, like, you kind of just go battle phase, and then, like, you know, they're going to out yeah. it, of course, and the main phase two, Appaloosa, just doesn't matter. So you have like you yes. know imperm gamma city like so many ways to yeah. like out the Appaloosa. That's that's the reason I really like Phantasmi. Yeah, uh, and it's also a body for Modimo Dragon. Modimo Dragon plus Phantasmi makes Dragoon or can make Kaliga, so it's actually worth it. Um, about the extra deck, um, from the past you could have noticed me playing Forty Nine and Downer why i'm not playing 49 and 
because there are no EV backroad access. So by, by meaning uh, uh, EV backroad, I mean, uh, edX like Eldritch, uh, Zodiac, they do not exist anymore, or they are not run in the same way as the past. So at that point, I needed uh, I mean, I needed to syner synergize my extra deck in a better way with my turn zero combo. Um, why? Uh, how do I synergize it better? By using Gaia. Okay, so basically one of the combo I built in my new spreadsheet because I'm anyone, because I really like to theorize over my deck list and making spreadsheet out of my... Um, I do... I do... Moody Moody Dragon, and then uh, I do M7, M7, add back a card from my graveyard, and then I use Gaia on uh, M7, and then I use Moody and Gaia to make. That's why it synergizes so good. Right? Um, and then you have to, um, and the rest is almost simple. I want to run a Dragoon for uh, Sky Striker or uh, against the decks which cannot easily out them, out it. A blind, I usually go for uh, Kaliga, because I'm more scared about combo decks than uh, control decks, because if I resolve my combo, I usually cannot lose against control decks. So at that point, it makes no sense to go for Dragoon, because it's a minus one, can get rid of your recovery, and that, and, and uh, at that point, it's, it, it just conflicts with your game plan. Okay. Yeah, and also uh, Kalaga is stupid good. This card's an FTK half the yeah, time. Yeah, it's also FTK because if you end with uh, Crystal Wing and Kaliga, if you negate with Crystal Wing, your opponent will not be able to activate another effect. Because Kaliga says attempt to activate. So if your opponent attempts to activate and you negate the activation with uh, Crystal Wing, your opponent will not be able to activate other effects. For the rest of the two and that's why the card is so stupid the combination is so stupid and you protect it with chucha if you can um and i guess i i, and I think the rest is pretty much a standard i don't run croc or Avenus dragon because there are no end boards involving a level nine other than shenshen if you don't run the exes if you run uh, if you run them, for example, if you run three beasts, if you want to run the Enter Blathmir, then you can run Synchro 9. Uh, I don't think that's worthy because it's basic. If you can make if you can make Crocoravenous Dragon, you can make Dragoon. If you can make Crocoravenous Dragon, you can make um, you can usually make another interruption. And at that point, I rather don't like that because it also gets rid of, you, of your recovery if you actually use it and, as interruption. Like, it should be a blank on the board because otherwise you get rid of your interruption, you, you get rid of your recovery place. And it is literally the, sa the same issues you have with the Dragoon. And that's why I don't really like it. Yeah, um, that's fair. Yeah. And about one card I... I'm not sure about, even though it's a very strong win condition, is the order in the side. Uh, I don't really, I don't really like order in the side deck because the deck is very bricky and fragile. So, even though there are not a lot of end traps which interact with, against this deck list, like Gamma Ash are the most impactful one against this deck list, and also Bell. Um, even though no one, like, there are a few of people running Bell in the main deck, like, it's not a common entry, uh, like Gamma Ash. I don't really like Order because if you break or if you get interrupted by entraps, then um, you will need a spell to restart, or you will need a name already in your end. So you have to open double, double of the same name and one is already used, or. Uh, um, or basically to not draw uh, enough spells, like, you get what I mean. Basically, you cannot restart your engine uh, if you don't have a name or a spell. And the deck is uh, split in uh, between, uh, uh, like, you have uh, 12 spells in the, in the main deck. And 
and you have 12 spells and you have like uh, uh, 22, 22 monsters and you want your spells to resolve and if you if you get interrupted or you break order uh, kills you more than your opponent if he's not running so just wondering why isn't this towns then why there is no talent okay um i mean against the three brigade you will have to commit uh, a name okay so you will have to start your combo yeah to commit a name and then probably what do you do after that? You get you get Apollosa after you get uh, stopped by uh, like Apollosa. You get stopped by Apollosa after you commit a name. Then you have talent. What do you do with it? Do you draw or do you steal? Well, I guess I meant like going first because like usually you'd only put an order going first, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I usually put order going, but uh, do you you are you are talking about running talent in the main deck, like, which oh. would conflict with. The Oh no, I meant like, uh, why is the order spot not a talent? Because you said you don't like oh. order, because like if you get stopped, I then it doesn't like... really do anything? Yeah, it does not really do anything. It's It probably will be replaced by skill drain, or maybe the third. Because I rather prefer having more blowout cards instead of uh, running a flute gate. I don't think this deck should run flute gate to win, because you have already your flute gate as your engine. It's changed. I yeah. don't think, yeah, I don't think you should uh, play the deck uh, in uh, in a guru way. So another thing, another another question someone could uh, uh, could ask is why are you running storm instead of doing? Uh, okay, this deck uh, cannot have fair trades. What do I mean by cannot have fair? If you trade two for two and your combo needs to have two cards to start and you will go minus one every time you start your combo, that means you are using four cards in your hand. Okay? And if you and if when you send Shinglong, then you are committing all your hands. All all your hand, all your five cards, and uh, if you go second it's six. So you will you will have to commit almost your entire end. That, if your opponent is not controlling a, a monster like Apollosa or uh, Savage or Seal or, uh, I mean, monster negations or interruption as monster. Um, at that point, then you have also to fight against Entra. So you have, you will have to face entraps, you will have to face back rows, you will have to face monster negation on the board or interruption, and you cannot have fair trades to be able to face all of them. Like against the three brigade, which is the most uh, uh, run deck uh, right now, which is the one of the top tier decks, you will have to face one revolt, one apollosa, and possibly one end. Okay, those are three kind uh, three kind of interruptions. And you cannot afford to discard one card for Twin Twister. Like, you need your card to be the most versatile as possible. And someone would say, but then you lose to anti -spell. You do not really lose to anti-spell because, like I said, you run Phantasme and traps to avoid your opponent go, uh, uh, to go to add uh, Revolt. But... Uh, yeah, you can lose to anti-spell. I rather accept uh, losing games to anti-spell instead to not be able to deal with this end board most of the time because I have Twin Twister which does literally nothing. It does not uh, it does not anything because like I said, your combo starts minus one. Resolve Ching Long is minus two, and then you will have to discard one card for Twin Twister, which is minus three. Okay, mm -hmm. I hope that that explained my point about Storm and how this deck cannot have fair trades. You will have to trade one for two or one for. Two. There is no other way. I'm, I I have tested the Twin Twister a lot, and it always failed. Like always, there were no one time in which I would have have the Twin Twister in my hand. I don't really care if Twin if Storm is dead. Uh, as my draw 
in the next turns because if you resolve your combo you will be able to discard the, the dead draw on top of you so that's my point about why storm is way better so another question i have is why is there no upstart in the list you just like prefer the pot cards over like an upstart uh, yeah okay if you run upstart you cannot run prosperity like i said i don't want cards to really conflict with each other like even though like i said even though the prosperity and the side completes in a way uh if you run upstart then you will have to put another card for upstart at that point you have to run uh, at, at, there is the build okay there is the build to run three the side one upstart one call by the grade okay mm -hmm. i i have tested that build as well the desire just sucks uh, mm -hmm. i mean the desire is just the worst card they've been created like it gives you like the the dream to draw two cards but the the 10 cards you have to banish it's always a pain like every time you watch the banish file you want actually to you know <laughs> yeah and you're super <laughs> and you're super okay <laughs> yeah and that's and that's why i cannot uh, I, that's why i rather prefer having prosperity because you have a way to recover your banish your cards from the banish pile with the nyan you um and you can decide which one you want to put back in the deck with the nyan because you can manage manage in a way to um to run your combo in in a way in which prosperity does not conflict with your end goal but you cannot do the same with the design because you can banish way too many cards or you cannot resolve a nyan before or you cannot do like you cannot do stuff to end with uh, your usual end board your um, your goal is to have a perfect end board or the uh, side doesn't does not allow you to do that like it, it's just it just does not work at all like it's a mess that card should not exist but <laughs> you have to run that because yeah i mean it's the, it's plus two yeah pot of grid's pretty nice yeah pot of grid is pretty nice pot of grid without a leg uh i mean yeah it's it's nice uh i'm not saying it's not nice but yeah i would run a three three prosperity because the card is insane like if you if you prefer to run three desire over three prosperity um i'm fairly sure i'm fairly sure you are wrong on that because prosperity is just the best card. and someone could say but your combo does draw no my combo does not draw at all like i can explain you one of the combos for example uh Special summon Lulu over uh, Chucha. Uh, ch uh, search for Lily. Lily special summon send the trap. Then you trap boost L the Lulu. Then you go for Tzolkin. And then you set. And you special summon uh, the Crystal Wing. And then from there you don't draw. Like you don't draw because uh, your 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 next uh, goal is to go into Moody Mood Dragon. And where do you draw? Yeah, uh, there are spots. Weird. There are spots in which your combo can draw. I'm not saying the combo does not draw. But you don't need to draw to perform the comb. Yeah, the draws you are just kind of like bonus any... cards. Yeah, you need to have a name to perform your combo. And that's why you run a prosperity, because you have way, way more chance to see a name with the prosperity instead of the sign. Also, the prosperity post side deck hitting orders kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, there is also another point. You run a three prosperity in the main deck because you are siding the side out. You want to have three prosperity in the main deck post side. You don't want to have two prosperity because you want to search for your pieces. Going second, or you want to search for the, your interruption like Inverman, like Storm, like Feather Dust, or yeah. like Bell, something like that. Yeah, and I really like, like prosperity. This card is really good. Yeah. And that's uh, the the only thing I can say is you can cut the two two for the third the side. Uh, I'm not against it, but uh, I really like two two for some crazy combo I can do with it. That's it. There is nothing else. Well, uh, is there anything else you want to say about the deck? Uh, thank you for having me on your channel, and thanks everyone for uh, following. Uh, the Iron Man scene of the Colosseum, and thank 
thanks to all my staff, which helped me a lot to realize this dream because they were all searching for uh, a, a safe place to have um, cash games. And I hope I did that. Uh, I can understand someone uh, would say Nash takes a lot of time to accept me, but uh, I really go through everything before accepting someone. I check their Facebook, I check on the scam list, I DM their friends on Facebook to uh, see if they are trusted or not. And I also check their history on the Welling book to see how they act if, when they lose a game. So yeah, I make sure uh, of a lot of things before accepting f someone in the, into the Colosseum. So I don't want people to scam each other and I'm doing my best for this community to, uh, to do everything in a good manner, if you get to what I mean. Yeah. Also, I just want to say I appreciate you for like having the Coliseum and having me in it, because I've gotten a lot of videos out of it. Yeah, it's been yeah. nice. I mean, the, the things work for each other. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, I get videos, uh, I shout you out, yeah, you get more we people. Get, and we get shout out, yeah. Exactly, it's, it's works. perfect. In, yeah, it's a very good compensation. Yeah, and like the money match videos, everybody likes watching those because it's not like rated videos where like it doesn't really what? matter who wins.